Hey YouTube land, hi Kandra there, giving you another action figure review and today we're having a look at a Bone Brawler Yokai uh, this is done by the Fush uh, company, they're well I'm not sure if Fush are the company that make it or it's produced by Fush uh, Fush is a YouTube channel that, well I'm not sure if they, they start off with toy reviews, I think they do uh, they have a actual website, but I just know through, through from Robo on Fush and his channel, the YouTube channel. But um, they've done a few action figures over the line. There's a couple of ninja kind of based ones, and then they've done the skeleton ones or these yokai yokai. I think is how you pronounce it. Y o k o i, or bone brawlers, and they come in this kind of window box packaging with an image of the skeleton guy in the corner you have the image you got foosh toys you got their links on or facebook instagram and twitter um on the back of the box it just has a contents listing and a image of the skeleton within so on the back of the box it says you get one skeleton figure one standard head one angry head one exposed brain head one cursed head with movable jaw which I believe is oops, this one which has this scroll thing in its mouth you can remove the scroll thing but the jaw doesn't seem to move on it there's one horned head with a movable jaw one screaming head movable jaw which I'm not sure I can see which oh, actually it's probably the default head that's on it actually because the standard head doesn't have the movable jaw. You got one pair of relaxed hands, one pair of grip hands, one pair of open hands, one long sword, and one dagger. So in the box, it has the screaming head on it, which is this one. So you can actually move the jaw on it and do the screaming head. So this is the sorry, this is the default head or the what was it? What do they call it? Um, standard head. This is a standard head. No movable jaw, just looks kind of standard on it. Then you got the angry head with the angry eyes, for however skulls are meant to make angry faces. You have the horned head with the movable jaw, which is fairly movable. Then this is supposedly the uh, cursed head. Oh, yeah, the jaw does move on it. It's just a bit tight to get it to move. It has this scroll thing that's embedded in the mouth. You can take that out so if you want it kind of looks kind of like a cybernetic head without that thing in its mouth it has these weird kind of cybernetic eye things and then has a symbol etched onto the bone but you can take that out push it up back in and then close up the mouth again uh, it definitely has more of a scroll ancient scroll look than a tech look but the eyes kind of look like they're silvered so you kind of have a tech look and then you have that exposed brain skull which is kind of cool uh there isn't a lid piece for it which would have made it even better if there was sort of like a lid piece that you could put down on it and pop it off that would have been awesome and here is the small dagger it is currently holding the large sword and then it has the grip hands now the grip hands aren't on it in the box you have the outstretched so open hands uh these would be the relaxed or open these would be the open hands so the open hands are the default ones then i believe these are the relaxed hands which look very crushed they don't look that relaxed they look kind of like they are a bit relaxed i suppose but they they look a little awkward the swords have a nice kind of black handle or hilt and you have the blade part is actually it's a metallic paint but it has a kind of a wash a dirty wash over it to make it kind of look a little bit more weathered and worn and i believe there is symbols carved on the sword is there symbols carved on the dagger don't see any symbols carved on the dagger there is they're fairly faint to see but there is symbols on there so this guy is designed to be a six inch figure so he should stand in 
with stuff from like Star Wars and G.I. Joe and stuff like that. So I will bring in some figures in a minute to do a comparison with. We'll just go over his joints first. So the arms jointed can rotate all the way around. He has a hinge here, a swivel, just where the bicep, the bone piece joins where the uh, shoulder joint is. There's a single jointed elbow with a minor swivel. There is swivel in the wrist, swivel in the upper part as well. So there's a double swivel. Basically it's ball joints and parts is the best way to describe this guy. So his wrist has a ball joint and you can rotate the wrist around. You can also rotate the wrist where it connects or the, the hand where it connects to the bottom of the hand onto the wrist and then where the wrist connects to the joint. You have the same thing with the neck. There is a swivel with a hinge. You just have to make sure the hinge is in the right position. Now the head itself is a ball joint. So depending which one you have in, it will be on a ball joint. You have a upper bow, uh, upper spine joint, I suppose is the best way to describe it. So it has that swivel and it has the double swivel. Same with the lower pelvis joint where it connects the pelvis. There's a joint, a ball joint there. So you can rotate all the way around. You can get into a good seated position if you want and the legs will help with that. You have a swivel in the, or another ball joint in the legs. So where the ball joint meets the leg bones, the upper tibia, tibia. I can't remember my uh, anim uh, anatomy of the skeleton. So you have joints where the knees would be. Again, those swivel as well. And they give you a anchor, uh, anchor, ankle rocker with a peg hole on each foot, which is quite nicely done. So all in all, he is quite, or she, depending on what way you want to do it, it is a skeleton after all. They all look the same underneath, unless you have prosthetics and then you'd be missing bones. But underneath, most people look like a skeleton. And let's have a look, see if he scales well with that other skeleton guy I got from a while ago here he is next to him so they are around the same height which is quite nice so if you had this guy which i cannot remember so bone lord warlord of bones something along those lines if you have this guy and this guy together they'd make a cool little army army built bunch of these you'd have a cool little army of skeletons and a guy that looks like a leader to lead them with which is pretty cool and speaking of guys with bone motifs and stuff like that we'll bring in because he's handy and he's next to me we'll bring in let's take his faceplate off er, bring in another guy that has shares kind of a similar element here is uh shadow uh, shadow tracker the uh gi joe figure so you can see how they scale next to a gi joe figure and we will bring in Bulba, who's missing his backpack, but he is six inch scale, so we'll bring him in. Here is Return of the Jedi Boba. So, I always find the Black Series Star Wars figures tend to be a little smaller than the standard kind of six inch figures. Any of the other six inch figures, sorry, the Shadow Tracker uh, is this guy. I think I said Shadow Tracker. Um, but I find the Star Wars figures tend to be a little smaller than the standard kind of six inch lines. The G.I. Joes are nearly an inch higher than most of them. So you have that. And then because he's six inches, well, we'll bring him in just for a laugh. And just move this big. And here he is next to the supposed six inch uh, Batman Adam West figure. You can see. They are a little bit smaller than most six inch figures. They're almost like five inch figures, but it, it is what it is. So overall, he's a really cool little skeleton dude with a lot of little options. He doesn't have too much in the way of like armor that you have to put on him or anything like that. But he does look pretty cool. 
I'm not sure if the armor pieces would swap between these guys. Hmm, let me try. The leg ones just kind of clip around. So, let's try and experiment here. It probably won't look right, but we'll try it anyway. Yeah, they look way too loose. Uh, unfortunately, the bones on this guy, on the guy behind, is a lot more chunky than the guy, than this guy. This guy's much more natural looking um, skeleton, if you can say that. I'm not sure. He looks, these guys, even though he's a skeleton as well, he has a bit more of a chunky bone thing going on. Maybe he drank a lot of milk. Who knows? But uh, yes, this Fush Yukai Bone the Bone Brawler is pretty cool. You could use them for a lot of diorama stuff if you weren't using them as a pure, you know, skeleton warrior sort of thing. You could use them as some sort of uh, in a tomb setting or some sort of like ancient burial setting sort of thing where. You could have fun and go crazy with dioramas with this guy. So, all in all, he's not a bad figure. And if you were to army build these guys, they probably would look cool in a whole bunch of them together. My only gripe about this, they are very similar to the skeletons from was it Jason and the Argonauts. Or is it Clash of Titans? Whichever one it is. If they had given them those kind of big round kind of shields with the Greek emblems on them which would look really cool you could really get away with these guys being those skeleton warriors from those movies i'm sure someone out there might be able to make something that will fit these guys they give them a big round shield sort of thing to make them look like those guys because the skeletons in that were pretty much bare bones and just swords and spears did they have spears swords they had some sort of melee weapon and a a shield so they were pretty, pretty uh, plain uh, for weapons, so didn't have too much going. But all in all, these guys pretty good. So there you go, guys. I'm going to wrap this up here. Um, I hope you enjoyed my brief little waffle. And if you stuck around to all the whole video, thanks for that. And please feel free to like, comment and subscribe. And I hope you have a great day. Cheers, guys.